tour. Hello and welcome to this. It's a Toy Shop on Tour special. And where are we? Camden. London, baby. Look, we've got the punks on the bridge dropping the signs. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going on. Yes, but we're here in London with a very special mission, a very special purpose. But today we meet the star that basically is known throughout toy he's collecting so well circles. Known. And is a TV presenter. Friend of the stars. Oh, it's going to be amazing. A legend. So we're looking forward to seeing his toy collection and also helping us out with some presenting tips. It's Jonathan, Jonathan Ross. Ross. Let's go and see it. Oh my life. Let's head straight in the big room. Okay. Don't go in the small room yet. I'll save that for you. Sure, I can't go in there first. You can't, you're not allowed amazing. in there. Absolutely amazing. Oh my word. Well, I have to do a full body search before we go on. <laughs> it's not for security, it's just for fun. Mine takes about three weeks, Jonathan. You'll be all right. <laughs> Who knows what we might find? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could be anything in might there. Might be that remote control you lost five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found that the other day. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is my office. So this isn't occasionally. I've done stuff and done pictures and like the newspapers say, oh, a look inside his house. Like, and they say, this is my house. And in, I do spend a lot of my time on earth in here. But this is, this is, this used to be an office where we had a team working. So I, I, I own this building. So I used to have loads of desks along here. And I had one area with my stuff in. And I said to the guys working, guys, you know, just don't touch my stuff. Don't go in there. It's fine. And we had cool stuff on display. And they were very, and then I came in one day and someone had been at my desk and moved everything off my desk to use my desk. And they'd broken one tiny figure which was uh, actually it was a figure that it was a little model kit that I'd made with my son years ago. So I said to them, guys, you're not allowed to work here anymore. You're going to work in the other building over the other side of town and you're going to be more cramped. <laughs> you. So I was so free. Yes. Like, and, they, and they wouldn't even tell me who'd moved it. I found out in the end. But anyway, it was sort of like uh, it shouldn't have happened. So then I thought, OK, well, do I want people working with me? And I started putting more of my collection out. And I started thinking, you know, this is sort of where I work. So I pretend that I work here. But really, normally I come in, tidy up, dust and go home again. That's kind of it. This, this is not like a conventional office. It's if, not if like... If you ever one. think of an office, like the, you think of desks. No, this isn't an this office. Is not, but you can work these amazing. days. You can work. You don't need a desk to work. You can sit down with a laptop in a comfy chair. Yeah. That's it. Oh, it's the idea of heaven. I don't know about an office. Yeah. So there's, um, I mean, there's loads of stuff from all, all the different interests that I've got. Most of them are, you know, gathered here. So you've got comic books here, comic art here. You've got toys here, Japanese toys, Italian toys, some French toys, but mainly Japanese. Some English toys from our youth, of course. And then there's lots of store display stuff. That's what, you know, I'm sure you get that way. When you've got to the end of a toy, you're yeah. looking for the stuff yeah. displayed in. Yeah. So yeah. stuff like that poster there, which is really, that, that was a store yeah. display in an Italian store from the 70s when Il Micronauti, the Micronauts, yeah. or Mikuro Man from Japan were first sold there. So that, and I've just got that from a guy in, I think in France, who taken it out from a toy shop. It's like hard mounted on a board. And you can see it's fading around the edge, it's a bit warm, and it weighs a ton. You know, so, but it's a beautiful thing. Baron cars are getting it handed yeah. to him there. That's one of Matt's favourites. But imagine yeah, as yeah. a kid going in a toy shop and seeing that. Of course you're going to want those yeah. toys. Yeah. I want, a, I want that game. And I've got What's loads of weird it? stuff. I've got some stuff here that, that people don't even know they made. Like, for example, you know, Marvel did so many spin offs and tie ins in the summaries. Mm -hmm. So there isn't, I don't think there's a particularly thorough or comprehensive list of all the merchandising they, they might have. So when I showed this to a guy from Marvel once, and he had, they had no record of it ever, that Spider-Man necklace. Yeah. And that's a display case they would have been sold on. But it's like a little metal Spider-Man necklace with that lovely plastic yeah. hanging thing. And he said, we've got, he said, I've looked for our archives, we've got no record of that. Yeah, it would have been just an exhibition. Yeah. Well, he said, no, no, it, would have, it was sold. Because so, the guy I got it from said they used to have him in my local store. He said, weirdly, they had him in my local jewellery store, which was like a low-end jewellery yeah. store, but they had a section with silly stuff. And like, I've got some, uh, once again, going back to Micronauts, I've got some Micronauts jewellery. I think they were prototypes, but like um, rings and necklaces with things like Biotron on and Baron Casa, you know, which were made properly like metal, quite nice yeah. die-cast metal. I don't think you'd want to go jogging with that on, would you? No. No, I mean, that's the only one I've got, so that's staying there. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't even wear that out. <laughs> so up there you've got, that's that, remember that sort of like, that's, that, that's just a cheap knockoff, but there was this thing called Super Spider, which I used to like, that little robot thing. But that, I think, I think that goes with G.I. Joe. Yeah. And I was going to customise that for my, I was going to respray it for my hench and cyborgs, but it looks so nice, I didn't have the heart to in the end. It's hard to get over here as well. That's the Spider-Man uh, necklace I was talking about. There's some glam rock boots I bought, which I've never worn out, but just in case I feel flamboyant one day. Original Godzilla, of course, with working tongue. Yes, Original, not a new one. This is this is that. Do you know this toy? 
I was going to ask you about that. This is amazing. I've got the box for it somewhere. I'm trying to remember what anime it comes from, but these little figures. They're like sort of weird, like almost like high detailed action jacks. Yeah, it's really great. It's, it's, it's battle beyond something or something. But this is the space. So this has batteries in that lights up. The chairs all move around. That's cardboard with the screens on. That thing, that, that's what you turn the, I think something moves with that. I can't remember what it is now. Um, but it's a really beautiful little toy. So what made you, because obviously there's some toys that you remember and you, you remember seeing, you're obviously influenced by Japanese stuff. What made you collect the stuff that you don't, you don't remember? What makes As you a kid, I think, well, I, I, I'm fairly traditional in that, you know, a lot of things, you get to a certain age and you think, oh, that toy I had, or more importantly, that toy I didn't have but I really wanted, let me get one of them. So you get one of them and it snowballs and then you find out there was more stuff in the range that you didn't know. But, oh, I better buy that as well. Oh, that would be look nice together. Oh, yeah. Oh, there was a prototype. I wonder if I can find that somewhere. So you go down that rabbit hole. I think the uh, Micronauts, my Micronauts love, and my micro, which is probably my biggest collection, I don't really understand where that came from because I didn't have any as a kid. And when they were first released over here, was about 76, 77. By the time they started coming in, the Mego ones were repackaged by Airfix yeah, yeah. and released over here. And I remember seeing a Biotron. I always loved robots as a kid. And I was about, I was about 20. I think, and I saw in just local dusty corner shop, I saw this Biotron on the shelf, and I thought, that looks interesting. So I bought it, had it for a long while, I've lost that original one, I forgot about it, and then, and this is, uh, this will be a familiar word that will strike fear into many people, so eBay appeared on the scene, oh. and then I thought, oh, I could find a Major Matt Mason, and I had one when I was a kid, oh, I didn't realise there were all these other Major Matt Mason kids, and I thought, I wonder if there's that weird guy, that Biotron guy I found, and then I discovered Biotron, then I found there was, at the time, I think it was a Yahoo page of fans, and I went into it, and that's when I found out they'd been based on a Japanese toy line. So then I found out the history, a little bit of the history of Takada's version of Mikuro Man, or the original, and how that evolved with Diaclone into Transformers, but how they made so much stuff, and then started buying bits and pieces. So initially with eBay, I started buying all my Major McMason stuff, and I had mainly that, and then some Johnny Seven Guns. So it was all the stuff from my youth that I didn't have but wanted. And then I moved into the Japanese stuff. And I had a love of Japanese culture in here, which was growing. I was quite early into anime and manga before many people in this country. So I was, you know, like, and I had a friend in New York who used to send me videos of, uh, like, uh, Miyazaki films before they were released over here. So you'd say, this is a weird one. You get something like, Naushika, Valley of the Wind, what's this? And you put it in and go, wow, it's amazing. But no one was even releasing them over here. Then. You couldn't buy them anywhere. So I got into that sort of So it all kind of dovetailed in a weird way. But... You know, things get in the way, like children and life and house moving and all that, and over the years, but it's only really when I settled, I guess it was like mid-90s I started buying a little more, but it was only from 2000 on that I went a bit nuts with tracking down all the micronauts I could find, which I'll show you that collection, but that'll take you a day to go through. And half it, I don't know what it is. That's the problem is I don't have the level of knowledge that the guys have. You have toy joy. Yeah, yeah toy I love. I mean, I know a lot about a little bit, but then I'll get out a figure and they'll go, oh my God, that's so rare, that one. And I'll put it in a display case. They said, why is it next to that one? I said, that, that, isn't that one where I went? No, no, that's that, really, that's an awful figure. Everyone hates yeah. that figure. Oh, okay, I'll take that away. Then you find out the toys that you didn't even know existed from other obsessions. Like comic books have always been my big thing. So when I found out the 70s range of toys like this, this is the Amsco Marvel World playset. So I've got one in there which is unpunched, unopened in the box. Um, and this one I found someone selling that they'd already used, but it's just a beautiful set. Putting it together is fun. It's hard cardboard. That is the base of the box. The base of the unit is the base of the box. So you take that off. So no box and survive. no box on that. Yeah. Well, some. I mean, that one has. So I got that some great. Used, but... His dad had saved it forever. It had never been used. So which is why I'm keeping it. It's museum quality. Something that's just excited me. Your finger puppets. I've still got mine from a kid. But you've got the box. You have got the trade box. Yeah, trade box. Oh, and that's super. They're pencil toppers there, in the box. Batman and more DC. That's all DC and Shazam. And then down there, you've got the big Frankie model kit that you would send off for as a kid from comics. Got a couple of those. And I've got one of those unopened, ready. I'm going to build myself. Those I bought already painted like that. This is the Spider-Man play set. You've seen these? Oh, this is cool. I've got two of these. So who knows? You might be able to take one. You open it up, and that opens oh. up inside. And it's Peter Parker's apartment, and it's some sort of lab. And then you've got the figures in oh, there with it. Figures, but yeah. quite big ones. So you know what I mean? They're bigger than... Normally, they're about that size, but these are quite large. That's awesome. That's amazing nice. that they survive. Yeah. And then these are Japanese model kits. It's Jig, as you know. And this is weird, this Psykill from GoBots. Oh, and I was thinking... A strange Psykill, I, I was it? thinking of building it, but you can see it's one of those set, one of those kits. You think, okay, that's going to be a... <laughs> yeah. yeah Let's put some time aside for that one. And I normally lose one key part when I'm building them. So, I normally glue myself to them. <laughs> and then nothing around the back there particularly, although I've got some good DVDs here. But this is good. 
Zartwitchy, you know Zartwitchy? Yes. The Blind Swordsman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Zartwitchy. During lockdown, I watched them all in order. Oof. Very good. And then I found That's out there was a... Too. Yeah, <laughs> and then I found out there was a TV series, so I bought that, and I started working through that. He's the same actor. Yeah. Need another lockdown. So we go over here, we've got vinyl and stuff, but we've got some weird things like... This is that kind of... Is he called Golden Mask or something, that Japanese character that predates manga? Um, it's called also, Golden something. He inspired the 80s, you know, the 80s figure, the school, school man. Oh, school yeah. Man. School yeah. Man. Well, you know, where because where it came from, there, I can't remember they're called, the word in Japanese for paper is kami. And then it's called something like kami gaga, so kami kaga, something like that, which was these guys used to go around before anime mm. and they would tell these stories of famous comic book characters. But there they they would be guys who had like a pedal, they would gather the local kids around and they would show the pictures while they told the story. So there'd be paintings of what was going on, quite lurid of these characters. Finding, wow. And then they, had, they would sell small toys and sweets after the show. Oh. So it's a kind of rich tradition in yeah. Japan. That was from like the 30s and the post-war Japan, 40s and 50s, before TV really took hold. So I, lo I love that character. When we were in Italy, um, I, I asked about one and he went, what, you don't know this? This is like my brother. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm meant to be sort the of... The Italians are mad for that they? kind of yeah, Japanese, yeah. especially these soft robots. Yeah. These ones that are made out of the plastic the shampoo bottles yeah, are made yeah. out of. Then this is a very rare tin Batman from Japan in, in Batmobile, which is beautiful. Oh, I love it. And that's just gorgeous. Because Batman didn't have his name on the side of his car. He didn't feel the <laughs> no. need to... That's like a sort of like plumbing van, isn't it? He's like yeah. Batman. Yeah. Come on. How's, my, side how's my driving? <laughs> I love it when they spin off into like these Japanese kind of Batman missile cars. They're amazing. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Sort of and I got the boxes for those, there, which are, yeah. But I look at Batman's nose, look, they've got the mask wrong on the cover there. Like they, <laughs> they haven't got the cowl over it. So whoever drew it, nose. they had a rough idea of what he looked like. I like the idea because it's like baby Batman in there. He looked like a little oh, baby. little baby Batman I got. Oh, there's the box for that space thing I was showing you earlier behind there. Look. Oh, there it is, yeah. Go on from over here. Someone will tell you what that is immediately and tell me I'm an idiot for not. I can't remember what it's called. Don't worry, we get that all the time. Yeah. And this is a cool lunar exploration car. Oh, you can see the Captain Scarlet. And that great. That came the from. Influence, yeah. That is. And look, the, they're sort of printed in, the drivers. That's an SPC. It is, isn't it? It's very similar. Beautiful, isn't it? What came first, chicken or the egg on that? What was but that? you know, I love that about toys. You'll find like, you know, some designs that from one country then it inspired or were ripped off, shall we say, by designers <laughs> elsewhere. It's weird. We've talked about the whole shelf. There's a Rodan on the shelf and I've, nobody's mentioned it. It's just we've gone through all this other okay. stuff we haven't seen. Are we, is this, <laughs> is this, are we allowed to put something adult on the shelf? We'd rather not. Okay, then turn the camera away for a second. <laughs> Look at this innocent figure. Turn the camera away. <laughs> Hoo ha. Bit okay, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Always the bridesmaid. I don't, that's some 20 store display, I believe. That's Ishii the Killer from the Wow. The movie. Like with his scarred face and his tonic suit. Do you know it? There are eight tracks. I've got an eight track play here. These are old eight tracks. I'm looking at the David Bowie's first. Yeah, that's quite common to get that one. And then I've got some David Bowie sunglasses from Japan up there on the stage. Wow. That's by, um, this is a toy range by Junko Mizuno, who's a Japanese artist whose work I love. And she bought out a range of toys, but they're beautifully made as well, like figures as well. I've got some of the dolls at home, but that's a, a bigger item, a more of a display type thing. And then I've got loads of vintage TVs and muckle players knocking around there because I like. Can I ask about that? Is that just a lamp? It's a lamp. It's a 70s gorgeous. Italian or late 60s Italian lamp. This is Italian plastic lamp as well. Most of the furniture in here is vintage as well. I like that, that's a very rare, that one there, that's the Still Nova lamp, I think that is. Let's turn the lamps on for you. So there you go, look. So most of this is like 60s, 70s Italian stuff. This is the chair here. This is a chair that you can reconfigure in different shapes. You take the things apart by Joe Colombo. It's got that on it. That's that, that's a Joe Colombo chair. This is a German modular seating unit that you can rearrange. Those parts will come apart. And then the table, don't know why I bought that table. It's got hanging chairs, so it looks quite cool. The least comfortable table to sit in a worker. <laughs> I think it's kind of got a weight limit issue for me sitting I don't know, well I think it'll probably from... bear you, but it's like, you know. It's really... so you're still buying modern toys as Not well. Not really, I don't buy many modern toys. And I'll tell you the main reason is the packaging. Yeah. yeah. I hate the packaging. Yeah. It's just no, that the, the art of packaging is, is gone, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like I'm an opener. No, I'm an open as well, but I stave the box. Yeah. And like now you look at it and think what, what the appeal was when you went in the store, you mm. saw it and it was as exciting. Yeah. It was that new version. If you look over here at the G stuff, and this is all G over here, more or less, oh, not down there. But for example, look at that box over to the left there of him in action. 
with the missile shooting out of his stomach there. Mm. That is what made you want to buy the toy. Yeah, the toy doesn't look as good as that. The toy doesn't move like that. But you'd see that, and that gave your imagination the fire to take it off into adventures. Nowadays, when you get a box, it's a photograph of it on the cover yeah. with, with terrible graphics. Or it's just in a blister pack, which is, you know, ugly. What? What you spotted? That. Is that in one piece, Jonathan? Oh, yeah. What's attracted you to that in particular? Yeah. Transformers. Generation, oh. Generation 1 Micromaster base. I didn't even know what it was. Oh, yes. It's, um, it's a Micromaster base, yeah. and this is the... I've never seen this before. There you go. That's like... That's and, like and one of those thing, things you, know you kind of go... I didn't even... Oh. I bought that years ago. I didn't even really know what it was. I knew it was somehow linked to yeah. Mikura Man. But see, I don't really... I don't... Micro I'm not Man a big Rocket, Transformer yeah. fan. Yeah. This know, is, this I've is, got my... Uh, I've got my this one if he's charged up my um, oh, yeah, Optimus. Optimus that stands up and walks and stuff. But that's that's more exciting than that. It seems to not be taking a charge at the moment. I'm not sure what I've done wrong. I am the leader. What you're the leader of what? <laughs> we'll never know. It's a manager on cubes, obviously. I. See, he's really old. That's a painting that someone got from an old toy shop in Japan. We don't know who it's by, but I thought oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, an original yeah. painting. And then these are G stuff, which they're mad for in Italy, but there's so much of it. I mean, I got into it because the small figures there, they're like part of the Microman family, really, the, mag the magnetic ones. And then, yeah. um, but there's a toy there, there. But this area, I recently, I, I, I was told that they put UV glass on it, but it obviously wasn't strong enough, so some of this started fading. So I've now put blinds in as well, but still I need to get, I need to cut more light out. So I'm it's gonna get an amazing room. More. Yeah, it was, you know, it's just heartbreaking when things fade. You've, you've even got some of the budget, like the, the, what I love about the jig stuff was they made that budget range for yeah, kids, which yeah. is what we found out in Italy. Yeah, well, and these one here. Well, like these ones as well, like really. So you could still have the play, even if you didn't have the budget, you could yeah. still play with them. Little plastic ones, but they're beautiful looking. But that's the problem with old blister cards as well. Yeah, they pop. They do pop. And then, um, but, but it's weird, some of the stuff on, that's, uh, what's his name? Um, Big Ox or something from the Gigantor, Gigantor in America, they called him. And these are great, look at that one there. He's amazing. And that one's die cast metal, so it weighs a ton. So when, if you, with the box, yeah. so you have to angle it back, because they fall forward, they smash the through the front of the box. Like in the film Toy Soldiers, where they're escaping. So but here's a new thing I got, talking about the G knockoffs. Yeah. But, and they haven't even matched the color inside. <laughs> but isn't that great? I love that. And you know that would have been the equivalent of a pound shop. Yeah. You know, that was a cheap version, as you said, a cheap rip off yeah. version of, an established toy line. Um, but stuff like this is good. So this goes in with Mikuna Man. Look, that's sort of like a weird, this is um, Tenra War. And they did loads of these figures with loads of armor, which the sort of Marvel Toy Bees Iron Man toy sort of like yeah. took to another level there, not as well. But when he's in his full gear, so I've got quite a few of those in there, I don't really collect them. You've got Crawl the board game in there. Oh my oh, life. <laughs> Unopened. <laughs> wow. So we know we can play that one. Do you know, you know it's probably one of those games that's terrible. And most it doesn't of matter, but, but you know, no, you're playing it because you love you're yeah. playing it because you love the characters. I've got a, there's a Micronauts board game mm. that came out in America, which is pretty terrible going to play. But what's beautiful about it is, is hard cobble stuff. You build up a base in the middle, so it's got a base for Baron cars in the middle, so it displays beautifully. Yeah. You like this stuff, I'm sure. Fisher Price constructs. Oh, Fisher, well, I collect Fisher Price. I love con. I've got a few constructs down here. I'm an adventure people guy. That's what I'm into. Look at that one. That's cool, isn't it? Tim collects a lot of constructs. You've got some on the top there as well, you've been building up. Yeah, well, lots of stuff gets half built here in a minute. Yeah. Gotta love Zoids. Zoids, I, yeah, but you know when you've bought 600 of them, you've got to put them together? <laughs> you go off them. Your fingers. This is a collection I'm really proud of because it was very hard to gather. That is predominantly, apart from at the top, where there's another G, giant jig in box, that's predominantly Astro Mu 5. So Astro and the Mu is MU. Really quite, obscure line of toys that were bought out by a small company. It, I don't think it was Nakajima, but they're similar to Nakajima Nodders. This is a more recent repo. It, they had a button, that, and when you... So that's their level of articulation, because that's all they used to do. The arms don't bend. This is where you're teaching us stuff, Jonathan. But we, to make it more this. fun for kids, that they've got tinsel in the arms to make it look slightly futuristic. The, the shoes and the coat and the little jacket come off. It can attach to that, which when you have string on the ceiling, they zoom down, yeah. right? These are, this is one of the repro ones that came out from Medicom made some repro ones. Right. But most of these are original here. The original line, and what's interesting about it was they, they, could, they realized they didn't have, this company didn't have the money to buy 
the merchandising rights from an established franchise. So they made it up as if it was an existing story. So there's a story that goes with it, a little comic strip that comes in them. That's the very rare play mat. These are the vehicles, the wind up vehicles. And you see, he stands in there with his boots. Yeah. And so they roll along in those. And they're just beautiful design. That's the, a really rare one, the one that fires the rocket. This is the bad guy. Can't remember his name, but he's very hard to find. And this is the rarest of the lot. This is the kind of like, who knows why they made a mistake with the painting, but only a few of these came out. But that's very sought after. And then, um, then you've got all the different characters. There's all the different suits. So you could buy the suits separately. You could buy the figures without a suit or suited. Sometimes they came. And it's a kind of got a little boy face as well, which is interesting. And there's one little girl. But because they've got the round face, they're not like harsh American action figures. They're more kind of juvenile. There's the, these are the rare ones, the ones with the figure and the suit in the box. I've never seen any of these. These are super hard to find. And these are the little kind of little versions of them that came out. I think this might be the only one left. So this was the toy door display advertising. But you can see it looks like a sci-fi TV series, even though it wasn't. Yeah. And that's how they sort of, there's that's the character beautiful. flying like I showed you on the thing. That's beautiful. Imagine that's... if you saw that in a shop as a child, yeah. Imagine how you'd be like, yeah, I want to buy them all. Well, it's weird because the figures you remember as a child, I remember, and I think what it was was Captain Action, but I remember when I was a kid, there was a toy shop at the end of my road, and I come from a very poor family, so we, I didn't really have new toys, yeah. very rarely. Um, and so I remember going into my mum, and I think she was buying us all one little thing for Christmas, maybe. But I saw what I was convinced was a Batman suit in a box with skis next to it. And I remember thinking, oh, man, God, skiing Batman, I'd love to get that. Never got it, never saw it again, right? Search on never ever found any evidence of this. What I think it was was I think it might have been the Captain Action Batman costume on display because it had his belt laid out on one side. Yeah. And I think I saw the long belt and thought it was skis. Yeah. So I that think that's sense. what it was. But yeah. I spent a lot of time and also I don't know if you've done have you ever tracked down a toy that you had when you were young you wanted and you're amazed at how small it is? Because of course you were small then. Yeah. Like somewhere in here I've got the Avengers John Steed walking stick that fires bullets at the end, right? Yeah, yeah. And I really wanted it as a kid. And I think I had it as a kid. I think it was one of the toys I had, because it was not an expensive toy. It's just a tube with a little handle on it. And it didn't come in a box, it came on a card, right? I've never found the card. But I had it, so I thought I tracked one down about, I tracked one down and bought it. Of course, and I thought I might even take it out as a walking stick one day, okay? But yeah, it's about that long, because of course it's a child's walking stick. So unless I'm gonna limp, so it's weird, isn't it? You have that memory. Although some toys are as big as you remember, like the people, Johnny Seven Gun. It's the Falcon, people do, isn't it? Millennium yeah, people, Falcon. They come every time somebody comes in the shop. We go. They come in. Here, yeah, I had. I, well, first of all, when they come in the shop, they lie to you. They just go, "I had all this." And they go, <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Oh, but then they then they tell you about this Millennium Falcon. They go, "No, no, no, mine was bigger." And you, go, oh, you were small. It's like it's like Father Ted. These cows are far away. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, that yeah. Sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, you don't think about it that way. I've, I've nearly trodden the Billy Blast off uh, yeah, shop display. That's there. a short display. That's that beautiful. That is amazing. <laughs> and that's the that that moon launch thing there is amazing as well. See that the red plastic thing. Yes. You've seen that. That's amazing. And that stupidly, I almost broke badly. I repaired it. I had it under something over the wall, and as I walked past it, I knocked a pitch off the wall, and that was under it. And it, and I heard the crack of old plastic. Before she was one tiny bit, but I managed to get it all back together. But it took me about two days to get that back together in the right way. It's a horrible sound, isn't it? Oh, it's the worst sound <laughs> in the world. And when you know you've done it yourself. So if you turn around here, even though this was not meant to be a display area, there's, there's a little bit of superpowers. I used to have a lot more oh. superpower stuff, but I focus on the Kirby stuff. So there's, there's some original Migo figures from that 70s period when they did the figures, the FF, which got, these are superpowers, but these are the ones that came from Jack Kirby comic books. This is a very interesting line. Do you know this? Do you know the Lensman series? No. Ah, oh, it's an amazing series. What's so weird is it was a Japanese toy range based on an adult science fiction book series by E.E. Right. Um, e. Doc Smith, right? Really grown up, kind of like, you know, proper, mature, sophisticated sci-fi. Never made into, as far as I know, never made into a movie. I don't think it was made into a comic strip. There might have been a manga about it over there. But they brought out this range of things. And that one, I might have somewhere out of box. That thing, that fires pellets, right? With such terrifying force <laughs> that I got one out and I put it in a box to see, didn't want to lose the pellets to fire it. Turn it on. And they were like bouncing out all over the box. It was like I almost lost an eye in the way that you're warned not to use it. So they're amazing toys. You can't see it, but there you can see the little figures. See Galactic Patrol lens yeah, right. They look like I love them. Yeah. It's like Tony yeah. Robots. Yeah, and those are they they've are. got a remote yeah. control. They 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 move. You can drive them around. Yeah. Um, that's a Japanese Spider-Man toy up there. These are rare Japanese tins with so, the boxes in the Perspex boxes poppy, behind it. it? Uh, poppy. I think Poppy uh, Poppy doesn't isn't actually a company. I don't think. 
Poppy is sort of like a, a descriptive thing, as I understand it. Um, that's really that the whole the, the, that's the thing that, that expands. It's like the Hulk, yeah. like the Hulk cage one. Yeah, yeah. I've got the I've Hulk never cage. Seen, I've never seen the, the thing, thing one. Before. Like, that's what's left of the box, but I managed to save some of it. The boxes are always nailed on those. I've yeah. ne not had a nice one ever. These are look at these. <laughs> I mean, if visitors do come from a place like that, I'm going to run. Yeah. Look at this guy here, look. But like he's got a sort of jig face oh. on. <laughs> they were just sort of like cheap little toys. God. And this one's got another. Oh. <laughs> that's, I think, Kashan, maybe. Um, that's a Lensman model kit down there. Then you've got an early Marvel jigsaw puzzle based on a John yeah. Byrne piece of art. That's very nice. And these are mainly. Oh. There's a figure of me that someone made. It was some toy. The company that were doing the Doctor Who figures back in the noughties. Oh, yeah. Made a fully yeah. articulated oh, me from that brilliant. period. That, that was the Spider-Man sticker set. Yes. But you know, you want, and these are Spider-Man, Marvel, I've got a bunch of them there, about 50 in there, iron-ons oh, yeah. from the 60s, which I will use one. I will try and uh, see if they've still got any power. But these are, that's a Randy Bowen finished model, but these were model kits that I built. So that was a Moebius I built. So that's it's um, built and painted. Very good. Yeah, Moebius the, Living Vampire, and that's a Conan kit I built based on a, the early Barry Smith cover. And that one, I think that was early Sideshow, before they made figures, I think they made model kits. I've got a, um, well it might be in graffiti or something like that, I've got a, a Bernie White some Frankenstein tabla by them in there that I've not got around to yet. And there's the Werewolf by Night, which is just about to be a Marvel it is TV, TV thing. Series, isn't it? Yeah. That's a great model, isn't it? It's cool. It is nice, that. that was, I uh, took a lot of time painting that one. Great comic that I've been reading that recently. Yeah, it's fun, although the art went up and down. That one I'm about to take apart and make into a spaceship for uh, Major Matt Mason. But the great thing about Barbie stuff, it works for 12 inch figures. So if you see over here, I've got a, this was a custom suit of Ghost Rider that I got off some guy in America. And so I took apart Ken's motorcycle and made it into the goat. That was a Ken pink and blue motorcycle. It's just Ken at night. Yeah. <laughs> and this, and there's the original Barbie helicopter, which I bought a couple of those for customizing. And here's the one I made into a Batman oh, one. man, look at that. For a Captain Action that figure. That works really well. It does, doesn't it? It's quite nice, isn't it? That's come out of the colours. Bang on, you've got the right colour. Yeah. So here, this is what Ken's motorcycle looked like before I customised it. <laughs> but once again, it's awful, because even though I know these are ten a penny, I can't quite bing myself to throw away the box. It's like it, collecting toys sometimes, it's, it is like a bit of an illness. Oh, yeah. got it. So this, is, this was my first toy obsession as a kid when I was about seven or eight. The moon landing was a big thing. Major Matt Mason came out. I desperately wanted one. Got one eventually. I was eventually given one of my parents about two years after they came out. Until I got it, I got hold of a... You remember Esso, the Esso garages? Or the yeah. Shell garages? Was it Shell that had... Though Esso had the little man, didn't they? Mm. Little man on a key yeah, ring. Esso, yeah. He had a yellow head, which was like a drop of oil. So, and he had a white body. So I bought one and I made him a little space suit out of paper. And so he was my Major Matt Mason for about a year until I finally got one with the bendy limbs. Wow. But now I've got more or less the full range. So you've got all the different toy ranges that go with it, the superpower set, the various suits. I've got a couple of store displays that I tracked down, which are filled with the carded accessories. But a lot of people at the time who had them, who were lucky enough to have them, also had Zeroids because they were the same size, the same kind. It felt like they belonged together. So I put my Zeroids here as well. So I've got all the Zeroids, some boxed, very rare to find one carded. There's a few carded ones there. Down there's Callisto. That's the um, Major Matt Mason villain. Right. And the other characters that go really well with this range is the um, Outer Space Men, Color Forms Outer Space Men. I don't know if you've seen them. I've got a full range of those at home. I've also got a suitcase that someone made, and you open it up, and it's got the full range in the suitcase just for emergencies. <laughs> just emergencies. I took it with me. I took it with me once to a meeting at the BBC and didn't tell me what's on the case, just put it down. And I felt a great sense of satisfaction that they didn't know it was just full of <laughs> color form aliens. Other people will have like an EpiPen, things like that, anything like that. But no, Jonathan's got a full box well, of color I tell you what I have got for emergencies in my other office. Uh, I've got it in the toilet. I had it framed this way. Is a glass and it says, in, and it's in the loo, it says, in case of emergency, smash glass, and inside it is a copy of 2018 number one. <laughs> what, the, um, the Ramco, Lost in Space? Lost in Space. I love robot. that toy. Isn't that beautiful? I once bought one off Jim Stevenson and um, sold it again because I ran out of money and I've always regretted it. I, th and I think I've only got one, also I've swapped one. Oh, bless. That's Very one of the best of toys ever made. You ever seen the Tetsujin 28 up there? Yeah, that's amazing, yeah. It's, it, I, I've got another one at home already, but when you take it out of the box, it's, it's about the figure's about that big, so it's about two and a half feet high, but all of the arms and limbs just slap on magnetically oh. and take mm. them off. So they're all magnetic, so you can pull off the arms and legs, not the whole arm and legs, the front shielding, the covering, Everything. and it all collects up magnetically so you can see the inner workings. 
and they were like they cost a fortune when they came back in America. Really hard to find in a box, but um, I'm lucky enough. I've got one box to one unboxed at home. So that was only re was that only released in the States and Japan? It came out in Japan as well. I've got the other box I've got home is a Japanese box. Right. But this was the American release, and that that's my best condition one. So I've kept it in there. I've, ne I've never seen one in the flesh. I've seen pictures. Oh, I've got it at but home. I know it's magnetic. Yeah, the limbs and the arms come off. Yeah, look, with the ingenious use of powerful magnets, body coverings can be removed or replaced. And the little figures that come in, you know, the little guy who weighs around him, he's got magnets in his base and he can perch on the shoulder and stays on the shoulder like he's standing with robot. And then we go along here, you've got, we get to that, there's some robo force up there. And another yeah. dinky, uh, that's a, is that UFO? What's that? Yes, UFO. Yeah, UFO. And then down here, we've got Captain Action. And Captain Action toys have gone astronomical prices in recent years. Yeah. I don't quite know why. Yeah, we found a lot more collectors popping up. It's weird, isn't it? They, become, they yeah. used to be really easy to find and fairly inexpensive, even box sets. Now, now box sets all go for thousands. You know, the box figures, the original yeah. ones. Even kind of repro boxes with original figures, and especially as some of the stuff was very hard to find, like Spider-Man. I've got a box one with the computer, but this is the spider, but you see it's only got four legs because two of the legs have disappeared. I used to have four legs, but it was when it was moved for me several yeah. times. But I've got a few with the four legs ones in there. So there's the full range of all the characters that came out. So you've got Superboy and Superman, there's the original Captain Action, there's Action Boy. That was Sergeant Fury, bizarrely. Why they chose to make a Sergeant Fury figure? That was um, Steve Canyon, I think. Spider-Man, weird thing. Batman with the weird cape. Batman, Batman came with the gun as well. The Robin figure, they never made a Robin figure, so that's a custom suit that someone made. Captain America with his gun, that he never actually had. Bucky is a custom figure. Ming the Merciless, Green Hornet, Kato. They did bring out a Kato suit for Action Boy. Slightly racist. Um, the Phantom, who's a huge in Australia, for reasons that elude me. Then down here, some more cut. There's the original Tonto, but the Flash is a custom. The Green Goblin's a custom. That's a more modern Spider-Man, because Doc Doom's a custom. Red Skulls are custom, original, Phantom original. That is um, Buck Rogers. Aquaman and Aqualad. Aqualad's a custom. The Aquaman's original, very hard to find out. And then down here, these are the really rare ones. These were released at the time. They were hoping to get the girl market involved. And they called them Super Queens. Didn't sell at all. So loads of them got trashed. They're really hard to find, especially in box. We've got a Batgirl and Wonder Woman in box. Mira is very hard to find. That's Aquaman's lady and then there's another back girl behind there some action suits and down here even more custom jobs see mysterio black spider-man suit electro the thor and the loki were when they re revived the, the line around 99 or something or 2002 or something like that and they bought out suits which weren't as good there's an original shang chi custom iron man custom they did bring out an iron man later on that's a great that's an adam west style custom job <laughs> batman lex luther behind him uh, venom or carnage whichever one that is Nick Fury, Daredevil custom, uh, what's his name, Fu Manchu, The Punish is a good custom job, Shazam custom, very offensive Red Skull, Martian Manhunter, which is great to see. These were the repro ones when they came out in the, uh, see they bought out a full size Kato, so that must have been a custom Kato for Captain Action. And they're, they're still quite nice, they were still quite nice. This is super weird, this is the Silver Street, the Captain Action car. That's what I was going to ask about earlier. Almost impossible to find. There's another one in the really colourful box down there. The wow. box inside. And that's more Major McMason figures in a... That's the shipping box for the Major McMason figures as well. That's amazing. I've never seen... I've got to say, I've never seen a quite as good coloured uh, Eagle One uh, as I that one. I've that's got, amazing. There's another one in the box up there, I think. I, it's one of my favourite toys. I, I love it. I love the toy. Well, that's a bit flimsy, the build, in terms of like when you open oh, it. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Oh, those, those clips on the, on the two doors. A are bit terrible, tricky. Aren't they? They're a bit tricky. Oh, yeah, speaking of Captain Action, so this is because I love it. My, uh, DC did have a Captain Action comic book out, and there's a page of the original artwork from it. Oh, very nice. By Gil Kane. I'm not sure who the ink's on that. Probably might be Murphy Anderson, but beautiful page, isn't it? Oh, and this was where this came out weirdly. They Japanese licensed it to, to make one. Ultraman, Ultraman Captain Action wow. suit, which came out as a limited edition. 50th anniversary of Captain Action. But it's amazing, isn't it? That's really cool. I think I, I got two and I put one in as on a, on a figure somewhere. But once again, I don't know where. When I redid this office to myself, I made one area as a model building room. So if you come in here, there's all model kits ready to be made up there as well. There's a Godzilla I made. There's a Mars Attacks I made. There's a Frazetta Death Deal I made in here. Paints. CD built into the wall there. And then all the model making kits. And I've got an extractor fan here for uh, safety first. <laughs> and I'm not really working this. And I was thinking of doing these obscure 
Get, get, get no kitaro Japanese model kits. Oh, I like that. Yeah. They're the, the umbrella man from Get, get, get no kitaro. And I've got a Jaguar to have to build there, a Hulk to build, Aurora Witch ready to go. This was the amazing Spider Man Hulk toilet paper. There's a whole story drawn by Marie Seven on Marie Seven on the toilet paper. That's amazing. That's gone from being be personal role. For, for obvious reasons, few of these have survived. Yeah. But in the amazing, weird licensing thing, who thought, let's put a continuing story on the yeah. toilet paper? Because when you got the loo, if someone else has been first, you've yeah. missed a chunk of the story. Yeah. Have you wiped? I was reading that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, Man. Everyone walking around the house not wiping. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. So this incorporates Mikura Man, a little bit of Transformers, Timanic, or Diacron. But this is the, probably the rarest start my minister, which that is, is I was asked for ages, is this shop display. You see these gold guys? These were for a competition in a Japanese TV kids magazine, and you had to enter the competition or send tokens in. There's only about 500 of them in the planet. I've managed to get about 10 of them, but they're amazingly rare and beautiful to look at. These is the Phaeton guy, or Phaeton. He's very rare. Most of these are rare. These are the little, these are made by a very clever guy in um, America, a Michael Mann fan. I think they were made by, his name is Ray. Uh, Ray Miller, I think. And he makes these figures and he made some other custom jobs. He made those. They're rare ones. That's one of the, uh, Bikes. This is just, these aren't Mikura Man, but I put them there because these were quite, they kind of go with it. It's a lovely store display box of these figures. Right. And they're little friction cars. But they've got little tiny figures in. And then the really rare Micro Man stuff is down there in the bottom. Right, you see there's the, the steels, you call them, the ones that are made out of die cast metal and are in beautiful condition boxes down there. Once again, very hard to track down. This is, uh, this is the Sausage Hood Man. This was the Hood Man you got if you sent in coupons for buying a certain brand of Japanese sausage. If you go in here, this was a, this is a very rare toy. So this is a Sega Dreamcast built into a TV that also worked as a home computer. The side lights up. I've had it refitted so that it um, plays, uh, it's got a chip in it now rather than putting the discs in because it was the optical drive was going a bit funny. So I've got the disc in there, but it still works. So I'm playing a load of games in there, Sega games. And then if you kind of edge in here, these are store display signs. So that's a great one because it had Lika Chan, who was a ladies, a girl's doll from Takara and uh, what they called Robot Man, Giant Robot Man, but he was called Biotron in the States. Yeah, I was gonna say, we get him on the, uh, F, the Airfix Micron range, don't we? Same on the back, but that's faded. That's a Diaclone box delivering toys in. And my, the one I really love is this box here, down there. That's got Daka Chan on, who was the Takara motor. That's um, a yellow stacked surface thing, like a display case for Mikura Man. So it's just like yellow steps with a Mikura Man label on it, but you put all the figures on. Yeah. But I keep it in there because the plastic is so fragile there. It's like that really thin build plastic. Over there, these are all, um, that's all Timanic figures. I don't know if you know Timanic, the time traveler. Yeah. But they're yeah. Be beautiful ones. And I've got a couple of rare ones there. Now that's the really rare one, the gold one. And that came out from, there's a sweet company called Meiji that make almonds and stuff like that in Japan, and you can only get that from Meiji, the gold figure. That's the ones that like Easter Island heads. That's a transformer type figure. There's a big transformer there. That's the build base. That's original artwork from the, when they re-released Micronaut toys in America. Palisades bought them out. That's a beautiful silver Biotron in his case there. These are various, uh, various uh, vehicles that go with it. This is the Diaclon section. So you see these are all Diaclon figures including that one, the bull guy, who I love. And the, ve the ones I prefer, I love the ones that have got a vehicle involved. That's a kind of like machine, it's called Machine Dagon, or Dragon, I think. It's also called Saurus. And this is the recent re-releases of Diacon stuff, which you've probably seen some of. That's the giant robot base. That's the rarest in the figures, to get one of those in a box. So I've got the Italian release and the Japanese release up there. And the one above it is less rare, but they're beautiful. Have you ever seen one of those work? they got no. a little motor in it and you put the little figure on a little lift at the back of his legs and it drives it all the way back to the head so he can get into the compartment to drive it. Yeah. That's a refit, that's the modern version of uh, 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 that guy. So you can see the, the globe head, they kept the same but they made it obviously the old one better. And these are custom jobs, these chromed figures. Once again, I got these from Ray in America. He oh. custom them and he sold them to me and I won't tell you how much for but he sold them to me because he needed to buy a car. And, and those down there, see those things there, the white and colourful ones? They're called fluoros. 
and that was an Italian bootleg that they were trying to pass off as original. And I loved them. This is an original oil painting I commissioned. Um, and the artist, sadly, he is dead now. Okay, I'm trying to see whether it's on there. Yeah, yeah, so it was Kelly. And he did the artwork that was on the blister cards and the boxes for the American release of Micronauts. And I knew he was still working, so I asked him if he'd do me a commission. So I got him to do me a commission, which has the American release only alien figures alongside like the Japanese vehicle. That's my favorite vehicle called Rolling Thunder and the Escargo. So this is where the Japanese toy line meets the American toy line. That was Hornetroid, which only came yeah. out in America. So this is, but this is an original oil painting. And then I had like 200 prints made by him, which I, I gave out as gifts to members of the Micronaut fan group that I belong to. I've still got some somewhere. There's the robot machine there, which is fi figures up there in the painting. These are all Micronaut videos. These are probably, I mean, these are so hard to find. I'm, I'm hoarding them, unfortunately, but this is the Les Gargo, which only came out in Japan, but it's a beautiful snail vehicle that drives. Yeah, it's got a little snail. battery compartment. The problem is the figures are quite too snug inside. They didn't really give me enough leg space, which is the problem I have in cars as well. These white boxes are full of toys as well. Then there's more over there, build bases. That's great, the kind of like super power set. The power set which had all the different weapons in it. These are great, the kind of robot Sora. Death Mark. Look, see the white boxes up there? All Micronauts toys that I don't have room for to display. Almost, almost only Micronauts, not just Micronauts, but predominantly that must be 78% Micronauts in all those boxes up there. So when you talk about toys, what's evident? You're, you're excited. I'm excited about owning them. Mm. And so the joy of toys really should be playing with them. Uh, and, and I do play with an extent, I think. When I change a display, I think that's a more, but, well, that's not really playing. What I'm doing there, I'm building there. Yeah, but that's still playing. It's not really. And when is you it? rearrange a display, but that's not in a, still remember like... when you were a kid and you had Major McMason had to rescue someone and G.I. Joe was stuck in the mud and that, that level of imagination play, you just can't I don't think no. you can tap into it as an adult, unfortunately. No. Which is which is fine. In a way it's probably healthy. So I think what you do instead is, you know, you, you love them in a different way. Yeah, you set yeah. them up and look at them. You set and them up and look at them. That. And sometimes I'll do, you know, a scenario. Like I did have a couple of weeks ago, this area was all covered. The reason why the Sentinel was out is I had all Marvel and DC characters around him just having a big battle. So I'd position them all. But that's, I had to put it away, so it was driving me mad. I didn't He's know coming to our cabinets in our shop, Jonathan. So I've got another room to show you, full of toys. It's quite exhausting, isn't it? Well, oh, you, this, we didn't really do the hallway. No, we could do this all, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, Korga, I love Korga. The British answer to Godzilla. Have you seen the Korga oh, movie? I've never seen that. Korga was a 60s black and white movie about a big, it comes down the Thames. But what's great about it is Charlton Comics, who was like the third poor relation to Marvel and DC, they brought out a Korg comic strip drawn by the great Steve Ditko. So there's some amazing work yeah. in it, but that's a really beautiful figure, look. Oh, I need to track that down and watch that. And pretty good paint job, if I do say so myself. <laughs> the Billy Blastoff box sets and Robbie the Robot, which I love. This is Countdown, the space game. It's all in there, it's really good. These are, do you know the Hamilton Sp Hamilton Invaders? These are Remco toys, aren't they? Yeah. So they made the Lost in Space, uh, yeah. sorry, the Voice, the, voice of on the Sea. These are super well. popular, and the only time I've ever seen, this was a store display, stroke sale box. You'd buy the box, but it's got the, I don't want to get in there, they've fallen apart, but I don't want to get in there and move them around, because that figure snapped off, as often happens, you know. Mm. But look at that, there's the alien, there's the guys fighting it. Operation Orbit has got a launch pad in it. This is a brilliant stuff. This was a video control game from Italy in the uh, 70s. And it all connected up to the same sort of power source. There was a power glove that you could use to fire things up. And like you had, could buy the gun as well, couldn't you? Yeah, I've got the gun. Oh, there you go. I think that, that's not the gun, but I've got the gun in there. Then these are quite good. I like Starmite figures. They're very heavy. The, have you seen those? No, I no. Didn't say that. no. Starmite are great. I've got most of them down there. They're like a die cast space figure, but look at the design on them. Starmite Warriors. Got a Garlu in there, a Garlu there. I so love Garlu. My wife, one year for Christmas, had me a Garlu onesie made. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> got any photographic evidence? John? No, and it didn't fit as well as it should have. The women who'd made it for her. Again, have you got any photographic evidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a bit high in the crotch. You don't want to see those. <laughs> but this is the mini Garlu. Do you ever see there was a mini Garlu came out? No. A little wind up version of Garlu came out. Oh, no, yeah. this is going to be my kind of thing. Oh, oh that is my kind of thing. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Son of Garlu. Yeah. That's so cool. But Garlu, in a way, followed on from the fellows over here. Big Lou. And the, the box, very hard to find. It's in bad condition, but it's as good as you're going to get, I think, really. There's a few out there, but there he is. And he did such a weird variety of things. He had a compass in him. He fired a soft rubber ball out of his hand there. 
the eyes light up, you look through the back and that's meant to be like a, a, a telescope thing, a bit like looking through, you know, action men's eye at the back. You sight the enemy through big loose target scope. You can make him fight with all kinds of weapons. Blast off. Fire. Load his gun barrel arm and bam. Can anything stop him? No. Big Lou has all the tricks. None of it that much fun, but what a beautiful, impressive figure. That's the box for the Astro Base I showed you outside. Then this is the full range of June toys that came out from the David Lynch movie. By far the superior movie. Um, over here there's some new Akira toys I just bought. And you'll know that fella. Gilbert. Yeah, the Gilbert, the Bond. This one though, in there, I think the harpoon's falling around somewhere. I can't find the harpoon that one, but I've got a spare set of those. They used to be everywhere and you could pick them up really cheaply. And this, is, this is some, uh, this is a really nice thing. It's a, oh no, that's just a clock. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a German car set that goes around the mound. And the, I love all this sort of stuff as well. You'll remember that when we were kids. Oh yeah. The power annual. There's a Johnny 7, ready to go, with various assortment of things in there. But I've got other Johnny 7s on there, lots of other... Johnny Seven's knocking around there. This is the mask that goes with that set I was just showing you, that Video Connect set. Yeah. The Space Summit mask, look at that. That's really cool. Isn't that great? So it's got a white back, TH3, so it's a bit like, looks at, and there's the gun. You're saying that the gun looks amazing that goes with it. Yeah. But of course, unfortunately, it's for child hand sizes. So this is um, uh, the series Atlantic, the Atlantic set of Galaxy. These were, I believe, French toys, 70s, quite grown up design, slightly science fiction. Uh, there's Sky Girl who has her baby in a papoose on her back while carrying a big gun. And then that's the man, the spaceman in it, uh, Sky Man. And then you've got the various different characters like Humbot. Uh, I'm not sure the other names of them. There's the vehicles. That one is just like a very flimsy, but brittle, but lovely plastic. That's the spaceship, which is beautiful design. And then we go in this final room here. You come in here. So this is where I come and do drawing, hanging out. Do a bit of work and this is mainly Mikura Man and Henshin Cyborg. What happened was Takara bought the molds and the rights to G.I. Joe from America. They started making figures, yeah. military figures primarily but other figures for Japanese kids. The military kids didn't, figures didn't sell as well and the theory was they'd been defeated in the Second World War. Japanese soldiers it wasn't a kind of and it was tainted by the weird kind of you know, devotion to the godlike emperor. It was a different time. They just didn't sell. So they refigured them and retooled them to make them into space soldiers, which is where their love of that first came from. So that was about 71. So over here, I've got some of the very early, I've got some in box. Well, these are the very early Takara figures based on the G.I. Joe mold. So you see they're like, there's like a baseball player. They just changed the face mold slightly to make them Japanese. And that's not, that's a Captain Harlot, but those three are. They're really hard to find these figures. I've got some in boxes over there. And then when they retooled it, they made it, this was the Henshin Cyborg. Yeah. So he's got a, a different color metallic breastplate and they made him so that you could pull him apart and he joins onto his vehicle. So that, that's a Barbie car that I repainted for him. Um, but I've got one up there where his body is the motorcycle. You see that? So you take off the feet and the hands and he connects to the frame of the motorcycle. There was a oil crisis which is familiar to all of us and a fossil fuel crisis in the 70s so the cost of petrol which goes into the making of plastic went up the cost of transportation went up. so they had the bright idea of making a smaller version and that's kind of how mikura man came about microman micronauts because they made a small version and they also realized they could make a small version of the vehicles and the advantage being that you kind of charge almost the same amount for a small version as a big version but you can make so much more with the raw materials, but also transportation costs down. And on a toy store shelf, instead of you having three cars there for sale, you've got 30. Yeah. You know, so they made good loads of money. And that's why when the Kenner Star Wars figures came out, you know they did a prototype of 12 inch. Yeah. The reason they did them three and three quarters was because Micronauts was the number one selling toy in the US and Micronauts were Microman. And Microman were only that size because of the petrol shortage, which stopped them making this size. Yeah. So it all ties in together. And you know as well, uh, Migo, that was, they, they had first off on Star Wars and they turned it down because they, they had the best selling toy. They had Micronauts. No one's going to challenge Micronauts. Not this stupid space story. Uh, but what's great about the Henshin cyber, which I love, is there's the Henshin figures. There's Henshin villains as well. These are the alien invaders. And they came with different build on weapon kits. Uh, they're different molds for different characters and they came with suits like Action Man on G.I. Joe. The whole idea was to sell suits on to kids. So, for example, there's the, um, 
there's the suit for his pet. There's a cyborg dog and you can dress him up as a lion, a cheetah, look, a wolf. There he's in his costume. And the suits were based on popular manga and anime characters. So there are sci-fi suits that go with the figure. So that's for the Henshin Cyborg boy figure. And around there, you've got a shelf with almost all the suits on the figures on display. So look, these are all the original suits from the 70s. Red Baron. Yeah. There's a Carmen, Carmen Ryder in there. There's Ultraman figures. Lion Maru. It's a really weird range of characters, but really Spectrum Man. Torg. Yep. Uh, the UK, obviously, we had the smaller ones by Dennis Fisher, didn't we? Yeah, exactly. Based on the... Well, Dennis Fisher, I've got some of the Dennis Fisher ones over there. Cyborg and Muton. Yeah, there we go. And weirdly, when I was a kid, I remember seeing film which is like a children's film foundation film or something in which some criminals torched a warehouse you know for insurance purposes and one of the shots in the warehouse I was, was that toy range burning and i remember thinking holy no and it was like melting and they lingered on it i've never managed to find the footage but it exists somewhere and this is where the american line of micronauts oh. and italian line tends to be so there's all the sets loads of them loads of spares there Battle cruisers, rocket tubes, hornetroids. The really rare figures, of course, this is the one that's impossible to find. God knows why, is Sharkos, which was a sort of a bath toy. But finding that is, is impossible. I've got a few, but for example, sometimes it was like, okay, I'm gonna build one and keep one. And then someone would sell me a group set. And I'd say, okay, I'll take it as well. You know, and like, I have passed on a few things, like someone I knew was really after, Rolling Thunder, which is my favorite. And I had three or four of those because I really didn't want to not have a couple spare for myself. But someone who was really looking for a good one in box, and I had like three really mint box ones. I said, okay, I'll sell you one. It still troubled me letting it go. <laughs> you know, it's that thing where you let it go and you go, oh, I yes. but these are impossible to find. Micronauts, guns, and the helmet. You've probably never seen those before. No, that micro laser is incredible. Impo impossible to find. And they were throwaway disposable toys, but look at that with the helmet. And this is the gun. They've fallen down a bit, but this and it needs batteries in it. But obviously, I'm not leaving batteries in for storage because we know what will happen. There's a little micronaut sign someone made for me. So these are the and these were the this was the sort of like magneto was the, ma magnetic toys were the and this is the Batman that came out. These were mainly Italian and German, but they did make their way back over to America. I've got a Hulk one on card somewhere, and then Migo did. Then Migo repurposed the Micronauts vehicle for their superhero line. So those ones, the Hulk Explorer, the Rob, Robin Shuttle, the Spidey Mobile, yeah. and the Bat Shuttle, they were some of these vehicles refigured, re recolored. Baron Cars was along there. This is uh, figures on cards to keep them safe. <laughs> nice filing system there, Jonathan. But well, you've got to keep these things, you've got to keep those, look how those cards yeah. unpunched and completely hidden from the light. They're all, all those are there, all unpunched cards. Safe. More of those box set ones. Some of those are quite rare. Lots of Biotrons. Um, yeah, that's an obsession, isn't it, the Biotron? <laughs> well, I just really like them. But, you know, I've got... thing is, once again, though, at that time, when I first started buying these, they were so cheap. Yeah. And people would often say, OK, I've got a Biotron. Say, OK, I'll take the Biotron as well then. You'd be doing them a favour. Yeah, yeah. Now you can't buy them in good condition. No. You know, you can't find them easily. I gave one... I didn't give one to you, but I promised one to... Um, John Bowerman, he really wanted to buy a Biotron. This is super rare as well, and we're just oh, gonna break it. Oh, thank you, didn't break. It's all right, it's okay, head comes off. This is the um, Ampzilla, only released in America, and you can see why it's popular. I mean, it's a beautiful little toy, Great, isn't it? but once again, the, and it's a quite hollow, fairly brittle plastic. This opens up for the man to ride in the back. Well, there it goes again. Okay, you know I'm not going to open it because I have this horrible feeling that if I open it, I'm going to hear a snapping sound yeah, so and that will break all our hearts. That one's coming off a bit here, but this one's better. Um, and that, that was uh, uh, English release based on the Japanese one. That was the Airfix. I don't think that came out in America. And then these are sort of rip-offs of it. Magnetic Motorbike Man. Once again, these are those sort of pound shop toys, but I kind of yeah. love them. And that's amazing. See that Star Cruiser? That's a, an Italian-only release reconfigured remote control car but they were sold as you can see in the box with microman in it oh, yeah. yeah so they repurposed it knowing there was a microman fan base so real toys did it loads and loads of remote control stuff like that didn't they yeah i've got a spider-man car that came out from the yeah, same people yeah, big, big tin plate top plastic yeah. bottom thing yeah really, and this is the, these are the legendary cario not really a figure but here's the box that you put it all in these are some of the rare figures you know what i'm saying about the early takara figures that came out so you see look see it was even had the gi joe yeah, brand yeah. on it 
So it was their version of G.I. Joe figures, but they just didn't sell. And so, but the ones that sold for them were the same people, were the ones that had obviously a tie in to an established Japanese character, yeah. uh, an Ultraman. And then once again, a, a classic G.I. Joe figure. But once again, these never come on the market. I've, I've never, ever, I mean, ever had them. Well, the only one I've ever seen is that one. Yeah. Even though I've been to Japan loads of times, and I used to go to Mandarake, and I go to um, the big market, what's it called, that big toy marketplace? There's one, I've never been. Oh, there's one place you've got to go to. It's basically like a kind of, imagine like a Westfield, yeah. but one whole floor is independently owned, uh, sort of like vintage toy shops. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Oh, and poster shop. So yeah. we should put four. I mean, I mean, yeah. you go in there and you go, oh, you don't happen to have any henshin cyborg figures. Oh, no, he's got them over there. You go over there, he's got every single one. Wow. Yeah. I mean, for a price. Yeah, I know. That's always the thing. Yeah. Remember I mentioned the the jewellery? Oh, yeah. So this is this is not Mikuna Man, but you see this sort of weird, slightly adult jewellery. Yeah. Came out. And these are, these are from New York. So there's a, by a oh, from, yeah. and there's a ring. And great, aren't they? Yeah, and I've got a Baron Kaza one. I've got a white Kaza. I've got oh, I've got a white Stormtrooper one. Look. Oh, there he is. Yeah. He's Amazing, cool, from this jewelry store in New York. So they must have just thought, oh, you know, what? kids might buy that, or young, you know, people might buy that. I'm like, snake belt. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so like loads of weird, like there was a super party thing, Micro Knight that came out in America. Uh, Micro Timer was a watch, I think. Um, I mean, just loads of weird. That's an Italian custom job, one of that. Then, then the black hole stuff that Migo had, that was based on the Magnetic, bo bodies of a lot yeah, of that, yeah. yeah. Is that, that's a Silog, isn't it? In, in our, that's in... a Silog, the dark blue is Silog. Right, okay. But he's basically Silog is a recolored Red yeah. Falcon. Right, yeah. See, there's a converter Silog warrior. But there's Red Falcon, the original. I had a few, I've had a few Silog warriors. They're all Silog are hard to find now. I mean, they're beautiful figures. Yeah, they're really cool. His hand, his other hand is floating around. That's the problem when you display them with the magnet, with the spring-loaded hand in, as you know. It was Poing, yeah. was it gone? Yeah. You got Matt's find got it. a story about that, haven't you, Matt? <laughs> and look, these are great as well. These were the Henshin Cyborg video villains oh, with, wow. the, with the breastplates that open up. Wow, so the, these are the, the henshin limbs that you get on the Dennis Fish ones that yeah. are quite desirable. I've never seen the 12-inch one with the henshin. Right. Oh, the yeah. there's a few different 12-inch ones. There's a few different versions of him. It was, it was uh, marketed in Japan as Open the Breast Robot. <laughs> open the Breast Robot? Open the Breast Robot. There we go. There we go. I like one of those Open the Breast Robots, please. <laughs> See, there's the original release of the Japanese 12-inch yeah. with the different heads. That one's got... They're down there. That one's got a human head and a robot block for his chest. That one's got a silver cyborg head, and that one's got the big square. Looks like an exhaust manifold or something. On his head. <laughs> this is great. This is a Japanese release of like a mad ball. I love that. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that, that great ball. though? Yeah. Look how, look how and I love the packaging that of that. Ball there. We just bought some South American knockoff yeah. mad balls. Yeah. And they're not as bonkers as that, but very bonkers. Dinky Eagle. Gotta love that one. And then also. Got a whole set of Space 1999 bubblegum cards here. Oh, excellent. All wax packs. Have you yeah. ever, late in life, taken one of those and tried to eat the chewing gum? No, no, I think that's... Have you tried it? I did it. I had a box set of June pitch cards. Yeah. I thought, okay, you know what? I'll try one. Maybe it's still good. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so weird. Because it had a tiny... It was like the ghost of a flavour still in it. Yeah. But then it was just like eating a kind of... It was just like eating a very kind of... Um, Soft plastic, not soft though, still brittle but thin plastic. It's yeah. gone so rock hard. Oh, look, here's the Space 99. Remember, we're talking about the places, it's like the Marvel one. So, there's the Space 99 Adventures. Yeah, yeah. There's the Waltons, there's the Planet of the Apes, and there's uh, another Marvel world. <laughs> That's amazing. And there's some black hole bubblegum cards. But this is this was a this was a poster that you only got if you won a competition, a Henshin Cyber competition. And what you won if you won the competition is you won that poster and that radio. So that's the only one that I've ever seen still existing in the world. Really great, because it cost me a fortune. But I thought I'd track down the radio to go with it. And people who know, a couple of Japanese friends come in, and, oh. and they admire the level of consistency. And then these are great model kits as well. I don't know if you've seen these. I mean, beautiful artwork. 
just beautiful. I love it. The earnest 70 sites, look at, but look at that. Yeah, nice view. I mean, I'm not going to build these because that is too beautiful yeah. as it is in there. It's amazing how they're sort of timeless, that packaging as well. Yeah. And that is a, that is a knockoff. See that thing there? That's a knockoff of the Henshin Cyborg Jaguar. Yeah, I was eyeing that. That's all. a knockoff within that. And I've got another weird, this one, we don't, no one quite knows where this came from. This was someone in Australia sold me this. A repackaged Henshin Cyborg, a Cyborg Man crime fight of the future on that car with the blister pack. It's like... All his joints move, fights evil throughout the universe, remove his arms and slot in his weapon of destruction, and fire them at the touch of a button. It's amazing, isn't it? It looks almost like it's it is it's just a straight knockoff, isn't it? But I've really... never seen a, a card that big no. having a figure on and I've never seen you know and once again that's the only one I've ever seen. I've never even seen an image of it anywhere. No. That this guy had it and he initially wanted way too much and I said, you know what, keep it. And he went, oh, okay. Oh this is another cool knockoff. Once again, don't know anything about it. Clearly just a kind of cheap toy yeah. version of it. Doesn't move properly, but it's got the same sort of design. But kind of beautiful, isn't it? It is. Yeah. This was the uh, Italian-only jigsaw puzzle. Micronauts jigsaw puzzle that you got in a little box. I've got some big gym over there. And that's got more. That's got he all those boxes that have henching suits in, carded in nice condition. So that's kind of it. Wow, Jonathan, collection is amazing. Thank you. Uh, is, I mean, like, I mean, it's next level, isn't it? It's like you you just you've collected for a long time, but and it's evident. But you've well, you know, what? I've managed to stay at least fairly narrow with my. Oh, that's why when I did get rid of a lot of stuff, which I virtually gave away, you guys missed out on a lot of good stuff. That, we don't but know anyway, giving away. Uh, swap, I mean, I did give it away because I let, gave, gave yeah. the money to charity, but. I got rid of stuff like that I quite would like to have now, but it just had too much. It was taking something like I had the big Batman cave from the 60s, the Justice yeah. League cave, all those superhero tie stuff. So I had loads of that and I had Batmobiles and I thought, you know what? I can't display everything and what looks good together. The Japanese stuff goes great together. Yeah, I yeah. love the Micronaut stuff. I'm more Marvel than DC anyway. So that's why I got rid of Batman stuff mainly, apart from a few Japanese knockoffs. Um, so it was... Uh, it was a slight honing, and I, I, I am going to get rid of some more stuff eventually. I mean, I've got to get rid of some of this anyway. So these were toy biz, terrible yeah, figures. Awful figures, aren't they? Awful figures, right? That's one of the better ones in actually. That is actually all right. But you could get, you could send off for the Aunt May figure. Yeah. Oh, so I, that's what I want. You can buy them online. You'll find them on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they want about 100 quid for you want You want to drop it out of the box straight away. Toy biz only 10,000 made, but it doesn't, they've given her like a superhero build. They haven't built a new body for her. Like she's got giant shoulders. She was a woman is in that, her 80s. Is that meant to be Aunt May? May? That's what we like. That's meant to be Aunt May. That's the Aunt May figure. Has she tried some of that June bubble gum? Is that why her face <laughs> is gold? <laughs> yeah, it looks a desperate Dan. <laughs> He's a really good figure, actually. Well, they One based that uh, on me, on the... the <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was yeah. Uh, only about a year ago. That was the, great. the Joe Hand workout programme you were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> First time I ever met Vic Weeze before he was on TV, I'd heard about this weird guy who used to DJ. So I took him out for lunch, and then I thought, oh, well, let's put you on the last store. But I bought that off him at the lunch. Oh, the oh. early Elvis picture he did. <laughs> See, I love... So I bought that off Vic in 1987, when we sat in a bar in Soho together. And he said, oh, I said, what do you want for it? He said, oh, give me a tenner for two of my two. I said, I can't give you a tenner. I bought that and another Elvis one, which I've got hanging up at home. I love Vic's art. I also think he's on you. Oh, we brought you a stick. Lovely. So it's our last one. You put that in the bin, just over there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, one look at Captain that. Black kit. And uh, yeah, came out of a, an old barn. Uh, the people used to have a shop, but this was only one. So I think they bought it for themselves. Yeah. That's what I think. Or maybe they just held on to one. Well, you like yeah, kits. It's just weird because as a kid, I would have never wanted to make one of these sort of kits, right? But what's interesting now is I would only want the hollow plastic kits, you yeah. know, the poop. Yeah. But now I prefer making these because the hollow plastic ones, I kind of feel like you've got to keep them as they are. They've got to, but these I don't mind because these aren't as exciting to me, but this will be great. I'm going to paint this up. Cool. File it down, paint it up. I mean, because I've done a few of the resin kits now. Jonathan, thank you so much. Pleasure. What an absolutely amazing office <laughs> we've got here. It's just, honestly, I'm like we what Toy Shop on Toy is all about 
seeing toys we've never seen before. And we've seen, I can't, I'm still now, I'm talking to you, and I know I'm being rude, my eyes are everywhere Don't else. Don't worry. So I'm looking at the toys. It's amazing. I've probably got stuff in the boxes lying around like that, which I haven't thought to show you. Like I've got prototypes, I've got, I've got mould, like Hench and Cyborg, you know those suits they wear? I've got the metal moulds they poured the rubber in to make the kit. I've got a children's, Microman children's restaurant seat and child's bicycle somewhere. I held back at buying the Micronauts mattress because that's quite hard to move around. But apart from that, I've got to <laughs> But you know, for me, it's a joy sharing it and showing it to people who understand it and love it, you know, what? because let's face it, there aren't that many of us out there. But today has been like, my mind is, my tiny mind is very full. It's been brilliant. Well, all the things I've said, you should double check though on Google because I'm not the most reliable source, you know, and you get to a certain age and memory goes, <laughs> it's, all right. it's stuff I've been told and it might not be, who knows, it might not be legit. I don't know, but it's I think all right. it's all right. We, we have to, we, good, we, good, we good. do it all the time. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a very rare one. <laughs> but great to meet you guys. And you. And okay. thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. And now sit down and coffee. How cool was that? Amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> what a guy. What a really, really lovely guy. He's so knowledgeable. And like his collection. Yeah. <laughs> Second to none. I'm still speechless. I, <laughs> and, and we're leaving and I'm like literally looking around going, oh, look at this, like that, look at that. And what we couldn't leave. He no. kept talking about some more things. He spent that so we much didn't time film. Yeah. with us. And it, what, a, what a kind man to spend that much time with us. Offering us not only his expertise on the toys and the things that he that he clearly loves, like we do, oh, yeah. but also he's like he gives us loads of tips when he's presented. Mm. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don't he get gave, into this game. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us loads of tips, loads of helpful advice. I'm absolutely yeah, just to have that experience of seeing so many amazing toys, a lot of which I haven't seen before or haven't seen in that quantity. And someone in the public eye who truly loves toys yeah that's what's nice isn't it yeah and it really came across the more and more we sort of delved in and there was boxes and stuff and you just dig oh, there's through. more and more so, so much stuff yeah. there it was amazing the japanese toy influence and i didn't even get a chance to talk about his sony abos he had several sony abos well he, oh. he had loads didn't he? he said i've got more as I well know. he just looked like what, it, oh yeah. I'm going to have to have a word with him. There is so, there's so <laughs> much stuff, yeah. there's so much stuff. But I think, I think that Diaclone cardboard box for me, oh, yes. that was just, because Japanese knockoff like cat with all the different heads yeah, and the lion. Yeah. And I was like looking at that for ages until he oh, pulled it out. With the rubbery bits that you yeah. stuck on it, yeah. Because he was just in his flow and I didn't want to interrupt <laughs> him. It was like, he was just so much stuff and he loved it so much. Yeah. And, and we did too, we had a great time. Oh yeah, it was brilliant. What a day. What a day.